we were too young to know what was going on. But 11 years old when that was happening, I remember my mom making posters protesting, we want to go to West Hall, I want my child to go to West Hall, don't split the lineup, don't split the lineup. Mm -hmm. and my mom she still has the poster. Nowadays, my mom thinks it's better that we did go to Chesapeake because Chesapeake ultimately was a better school during the time yeah. that I were in high school. Yeah, you're right. I'm not saying that Chesapeake's better than West Hall, but at the time, my mom is comfortable with the decision of the county or whoever made that decision. Which is so far from us. my yes, house. Yes, that's the only downfall that was so far for us to drive. Welcome to the 13th episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. I have a really special episode for you guys today. I dive deep with my oldest childhood best friend, Vance Lane Vassar. Over 25 years of friendship, we talk about some early trials and tribulations, fun things that we did to get through it, and a little bit of everything in between. Enjoy. All right, guys. Welcome to the 13th episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. David Orlin Brown here with my best friend from six years old, Vance Lane Vassar. Say hey to the audience line. Hey everybody. By the way, we call each other the Red Light Green Light Brothers. That means it's like a game that you would get on one side of the classroom, other half of the classroom would get on the other side. And when you say red light, you would stop. And when you say green light, you would go. That's how far him and I go together. Literally kindergarten. Literally kindergarten. At McEver Elementary School. I learned how to open a locker with him telling me my combination, which is wow. Really? I can't even remember that. That's a nice new little the thing. Is, is, okay. Is that you remembered like three other girls. And I think that's how him and I bonded really well because we had a couple of girls that him and I were interested in. <laughs> that's the best way to make a friendship, especially when you're in an elementary school days. Shoot, I remember you coaching me up for my first girlfriend, <laughs> Courtney, in fifth grade. Courtney, do I know her last name? DeWitt. Courtney DeWitt. Okay, so we actually dropped a name. Courtney. Hey. And you said you... Courtney DeWitt. The I remember thing you need to I focus remember. on, David, is to make the girl laugh. <laughs> and this yeah. is me, fifth grade pipsqueak, no skills of social... You can help school me up in the game early Well, on. listen, you learn well. Thanks, sir. You know, Courtney DeWitt, I'm sure you're... Having living, living a wonderful life. It's got some kids. Yes. Um, Good lady. But every young boy has his first experience. Of course. We all go through it. You made it through. Hell yeah. So um, we met growing up mm -hmm. at McEver. Yep. Off of what road? Off of Browns Bridge. Browns Bridge Road. Yeah. Okay. And um, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself growing up? Where were you born? Okay, so I was born in Marietta, and it was for three months. And then my mom and my dad moved to Gainesville, um, strictly because my mom was a manager for Red for, uh, Red Lobster. And so Jimmy Carter Boulevard, the one off Jimmy Carter, she uh, managed that one, and that's what brought us from Marietta to Gainesville. Um, I was, like I said, three months. Um, Moved here, and then my brother, two years later, was born here in Gainesville. Um, pretty much born and raised here in Gainesville. Um, as far as getting to where you and I met each other, um, moving here, you and I met, in, obviously, in McEver Elementary School, which was five minutes from my house and seven minutes from yours, because <laughs> you were, like, two minutes from mine. So that's what kind of brought me into Gainesville. Um... What was your first sports? First sports, baseball, football, basketball. You know, not toot my own horn, but I was one of those kids that excelled exceptionally with sports. Well, you're, like you're, a, getting, you're a larger than, than well, normal human. As far um, as you, you best with these Greek genetics well, from the gods of Miss Miss Jan and Mr. Vance. I was given great genetics, I'll, I'll acknowledge that, but it took me time to realize that. So as a child, you don't realize that. You're just naturally good at something. So I was naturally good at it. So as far as being like elementary school level, like you and I going to McEver Elementary, I didn't know what you know ability that I had. My parents did obviously, but of course I found out later in my How did that happen? High school. Well, my mom used to always tell me that when she would go to games, 
and she, it's kind of a funny story. She would say, you know, you would come up to the plate and it'd be a couple of minutes and all of a sudden somebody would yell your name. And I have no idea who they are yelling your name. That tells me that my son has been doing something in the past that a gentleman at a ballpark, a local ballpark, is yelling my son's name and he doesn't know that I'm the mother of the child that he's yelling for and cheering. She knew that I had an ability. Mm -hmm. Just based off that. So it was pretty cool to... That was like early baseball. It was almost almost like a fan. That was when we had the girls on our team as mm -hmm. well. It was T-ball. It was like... Uh, Lauren Sims. Yeah, we had Lauren, we had Allie. We had a bunch of different girls that were on our team. But for me, for my mom to know that I was one of those children in playing sports that excel was somebody else cheering me on. Because mm -hmm. she knew then, I'm not his only fan. So, so what was your first sport... <laughs> that baseball you were truly passionate about baseball baseball was definitely the first sport why and i wish it would have been a sport that i stayed with now that i think about going back to my like middle school days high school days i would definitely would have stuck with baseball um personal reasons is why i didn't stick with baseball in in high school our um, coach yes the coach absolutely um we don't have to name drop that guy but i will interrupt and say that one of my early memories of you and your mom was Coach Page. Ah, uh, not yeah, playing. Randy, Randy Page. And even though I was in the same team and league as y'all, I wasn't as good. Yeah. And so he had older kids coming down and playing just because he wanted to win. He didn't actually care about the kids getting to go out there and have fun. Well, he did. He did it. And you have that where his son was a part of the team, then you have where he's the head coach of the team. So you have your favoritisms, and you have that, and you have your guesses, you have... Yeah, so you have kids that were like a year older coming down to play on our fourth grade and we, team. And as My being, mom made a big scene. And, and, and being an adult, that's... you gotta understand where he was coming from, but as a child then, of course we didn't understand it, was like, why aren't you playing the best children? I had no idea what was going on. And neither did I. Neither did I, but as we get older, we started to realize it with him, but he was a fantastic right. elementary school recreation right. coach. That was good to hear that. Mm -hmm. So then you got into football. Mm -hmm. Football is kind of what like rocketed me. So it was mm -hmm. more of like eighth grade. Eighth grade is when I really kind of excelled and realized that I was, me realizing that I was better than a lot of kids. You started playing football in sixth grade, right? I played it in sixth grade for West Hall Junior Spartans. Well, fifth grade and sixth grade. And that's when I realized I, I, was, I was a good running back. Yeah, it was summer league, right? Now, I, now our, uh, West, our West Hall Junior Spartans team, we went 6-0. and We went to play six games. So we went 6-0. and And then my second year with them, we went 6-1. and We lost to one team, and it was a new school player called Fly Ranch. Mm. And at this time, when I was there, so it was Chester T. Chester T. and Fly Ranch were being two new schools. Obviously, you know that because we went through it together. Um, but yeah, you can the only team, that yeah, the only team that we lost to was the Fly Ranch team, the new team. So that's my West Georgia, or West Georgia. That's where I went to college, by the way. My West Hall Junior Spartans before I went to Chester T., we lost one game my second year, and that was my last year with Junior Spartans because this is when Chesty High School and Fly Ranch High School was not around. Right. It had been created. And I remember my mom actually making a poster with your picture, my picture, uh, Lindsay Elliott, Courtney, because she lived in the same neighborhood as me. We had a sign that we were actually protesting for you and I, because we, not have to we go were the same, we were in the and same get district. To go to West Hall. I mean, you lived. Too we were heartbroken yeah. to not get to go to West you Hall. You and I were supposed to go there. This is something I never really talked about on my podcast. Is yeah. we were, I was gerrymandered. We were we, supposed we to go were, to West Hall. We were gerrymandered. Yeah. Technically, lines were drawn above our control through political interest mm -hmm. in our educational district yeah. in Hall County, and just because we lived on one side of the street. We had to go to this new school that was 25 minutes yep. from well, where we lived. Seven minutes to West Hall, 10 minutes to Gainesville High School, and then it was like anywhere. 11 to Johnson. Was, no, 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 no. Johnson was, no, no, Johnson was further. It was, I remember my mom actually doing it. She was like, it's 10 minutes to West Hall, 
or uh, seven minutes to West Hall is ten minutes to Gainesville. So Gainesville and West Hall from where we lived, where the closest was a little bit closer. I mean, you, 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 it was probably you're looking at maybe fifteen to thirteen minutes. So right. we're a little bit closer. Um, but then Chester T was of course across the river. We had to go across the river. That was twenty two minutes. But based off the jurisdiction line that they made for Flyer Branch, the new school, and Chester T, the new school, I think it was because of the Mecca Road. If you lived on Brownsbridge Road on the right side of McEver Road, you went to Chester T. Right. Remember? Because of course. Danny was I there understand too. that's yeah. why. I'm not saying I like it. Yeah, well, I mean, say that it is what it is because we experienced it. We went through it. I'm glad know. we did it. Yeah. But it's a crazy story, though, because I kinda wish we it's, a, it's a story that you and I, we were too young to know what was going on. 11 years old when that was happening. I remember my mom making posters protesting. We want to go to West Hall. I want my child to go to West Hall. Don't split the lineup. Don't split the lineup. Mm -hmm. and my mom she still has the poster. Nowadays, my mom thinks it's better that we did go to Chesapeake because Chesty ultimately was a better school during the time yeah. that I were in high school. Yeah, you're right. I'm not saying that Chesty's better than West Hall, but at the time, my mom is comfortable with the decision of the county or whoever made that decision. Which is so far from us. Our yes, house. that's the only downfall is that it was so far for us to drive. We definitely were the furthest part. It was like an hour and a half to get home from the bus. Because there was a lot of people that lived in that area. But then you had people like you and I that had to cross over the river. But we had to go down opposite of the school just to get to that bridge to go towards the school. Right. That's what made it so far. So far. Everything happens for a reason. So it's good to acknowledge that. It's also good to acknowledge your mom's efforts in trying to get us. Yeah, that's what's yeah. She tried, she fought, but she lost. You know, Ben Martin, Lance Smallwood, Jay Green, a lot of those guys were all our best friends going to yep. McEver. And then we got split and it was just, it was hard enough for me to make friends because I was put on fucking Adderall and Ritalin in kindergarten and first grade. And so the few that I had, I wanted to maintain. And so getting shot up to chastity, where it was really just me and you and we never had classes together. Yeah, that's, I because, think that's, that's because you were in the smart classes and I was in the dumb ones. I mean... Don't smile, don't... Yeah, you know, it's true. I was held back in Yo, here. I'm not afraid to admit that. Like, I was in special classes. I was just... You know, I went to work with my dad every summer. And my dad's a tree man on his own tree company. And there was a summer where I was bitten with a lot of ticks. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of the disease called Lyme disease. It enables you to learn at a quicker rate. So we, well, what we've been able to find out with my son is him learning. He can learn and absorb so much at one time. But with me having that Lyme disease, it took me more. It took me a lot longer to learn something. So it was like you said, hey, ketchup is good with macaroni and cheese. You could just tell me that, but I would be like... I wouldn't understand the concepts of, I know what ketchup tastes like, and I know what macaroni and cheese tastes like, but putting them together, I don't. Mm. Me having Lyme disease, I had to actually go and experience that. But people who didn't have Lyme disease, they could, ex if I just came to you and said, hey, mac and cheese with ketchup is pretty good. You could imagine what ketchup tastes, mac and cheese, put them together, and you could almost imagine what that would taste like. Me, I couldn't, having that disease. So me being now 30, I think I've overcome the disease, obviously, because I've been able to accept it. And so now when I'm trying to learn new things, I try to literally point in on what people are saying and stuff. But back then as a kid, I, I, I couldn't do that. So I was in more special classes. So that's probably why you never really saw me. Word. Well, I mean, that's, no the, truth, that's the no truth. Talk, bro. That's sure. the truth. Because I was in classes where there was eight or nine kids. And like, I've never been, I was never embarrassed. Never one of those guys, you know, I was more of the jock student, but yes, I was kind of placed as a jock because I really wasn't that smart. But as far as like bullying and stuff like that, like I was the jock who took up for the kids being bullied. Um, and I can remember. I'm a witness of that. Yeah. Uh, through my, own, I just kind of threw my own testimony of getting bullied, <laughs> having Lane stand up for me. Yeah. So I just kind of threw it in as a side note, but as far as like, obtaining information fast, I didn't have that ability. But when it came to sports, I excelled. So it was one of those, you know, kind of like I was an athlete that wasn't really smart. 
Um, so yes, I was in special classes and had, I needed more attention, you know, drawn towards me than you did because it nat- it just came natural to you. you Have know? we talked about Lyme disease before? No, we haven't talked about Lyme disease. And I've never really talked about Lyme disease. I just kind of did some research. I kind of know it. And still to this day, to be honest with you, I don't even think I had Lyme disease because I really don't remember those days of me struggling in high school and middle school and stuff like that. But me being in, and you being here, you know, having conversations with your parents when they tell you things that you went through, right? That it's like I don't, re- I don't really remember going through those things, but my mom and dad remember me going through it, and so it kind of wakes me up. Like, okay, so now I need to believe my mom and dad said that I went through this problem. That I just really don't. I mean, I was 12 years old. Like, I don't remember everything I did at a young age, but some things my parents did do remember. I don't remember, so that when they tell me, it kind of like, okay, I can kind of see where I wouldn't have absorbed that or understood that, but now it's completely like, as soon as you were to tell me that I could tell you the exact answer, I could overcome something, you know what I mean? So, absolutely. That's why you yeah, I heard about school. it. Right. <laughs> I heard about it from my mom. Um, yeah, and I'm sure my mom probably told you about mom it. And, told my mom, and so she like, told me when I was younger. And, you know, that was that. Yeah, absolutely. But I didn't think that it was But you never you never or... saw me as a dumbass. No, of you not. never saw me as a smart ass or somebody who thought they were... Saw so you as my best friend and wingman exactly. that was going out exactly. and helping me... Exactly. Uh, ...excel into boxers. You saw, you saw me as one of those guys is... I've known him for a long time. So whether now 10 years, if we don't relate on something, if anything were to happen between him and I, or if something happened to me or something happened to him, if you and I were to look at each other, we would know there's a place for you in my history. You're a friend of mine. You know what I mean? Of course, we don't have that because, hell, we've been friends. Right. We've never had an apart. We've never been apart. Of course, we've well, been, of course we've been physically we've been apart, but as far as like connections, mm-hmm. I mean, there was a time where I probably didn't see you for five years, but we take there was a random text, there was a random yeah, we never or, really had like a, a tip random yeah. any kind of there is no anything. yeah, there's never breakage, there's nothing. Uh-huh. It's, it's always like if we kind of ventured off, sometime during the road we would reconnect. Right. You would have liked the pictures that I liked, right? And so, so something would have always brought us back together for the past. I'm 30 and you're pushing 30, 31. 31. I mean, it's crazy. I, I think I'm actually going to end up dying with you, bro. Like, we're going to be. So. <laughs> so. What do you need? Oh. But, yeah, to, so I mean, as far as that, that's kind of where we are with our parents knowing that I was an athlete. Of course, you know, she lost with the chest thing. Uh, I'm sure your mom probably falls somewhere in that debate, you know, as far as at least following my mom or or something to where they're like joining together and coming together. It was interesting um, going to Chester T as it was it's in its first years of inception. Mm-hmm. We were the second first class. we were the second class to fully go through and graduate. Right. Oh six was the first class. Right. And so for that to happen to us is kind of a unique experience. It is. We got to pave the way in a lot of manners. Yeah. Um, They're actually what? I want Coach to say, Wiley. I want to, that's who I, I ran into. I want to say it's like 13 years now for Chesty. I ran into Coach Wiley on Friday night. Really? At the square in downtown. I went in Gainesville. I told you. Okay. Well, yeah, sister, that's about to happen to you. And I could not remember his <laughs> name. <laughs> Damn it, Coach Wiley. I'm sorry. <sighs> He had his two daughters and his wife, and we chatted it up, and he, you know, said how great I look, and That's pretty cool and followed me online. And to run into a, a teacher who you looked at as a teacher, and they looked at you as a student. He was our cross-country mentor. And then when you run into him, like, excuse me, 15 years later, it's like, yo, I'm a grown-ass man now. Right. Like, you don't, you help, you don't you look at me as a student bit, yeah. anymore. As, yeah. I think I did that with our... Uh, me and Chase did that with our art teacher. Who was our art teacher in high school? Not Miss Cheswood. No, the, it was the gentleman. Oh, uh, Coach Hughes. 
Hughes, that's it, Coach Hughes. That's we ran cool. into. He still likes all my stuff. We ran, yeah, yeah, we ran into some. Uh, we ran into, and me, me, it was me, him, and Chase, and we connected like it was like we just were late for class, dude. Nice. As soon as we saw him, it was like, oh, holy cow! You, awesome. see him? I, you know, I can't remember the bar. Obviously, it's been two or three. I want to say maybe even the bar where. Well, it wasn't really a bar. It was a higher end restaurant. It was a uh, a social place where people go together. Yeah, and somewhere, no, it was somewhere in Atlanta. I went with Chase down to a networking. You know, not necessarily specifically for networking, but something to where people gathered and we just carried on conversations and got to know each other and stuff like that. And of course, when we walked in, it was almost like Chase saw me immediately, and it was pretty cool. Just kind of re reconnecting with somebody that. You know, as a that you remember as a kid, mm -hmm. you know that you had to say yes sir, no sir, and thank you and please and stuff like that too. And whereas fifteen years now, you you meet each other in real life, and it's like all he wanted to know, Mr. Coach Hughes, was what was Chase and I doing, and so mm -hmm. we were like, this is what we're doing now because of course he looked at us, we knew that this is we're, we're, we're all men now, you know. Right. I mean, I was probably twenty seven at the time. But um, as far as teachers, that's probably the only one that I've met since, and I haven't seen any of her other teachers. And as far as I know, I don't even know who the pre the principal is anymore. It was Bill Thompson. Yeah, it was for, Thompson uh, when we were there. And then Dr. Um, Sapp. Well, the Sapp was like administrator or something. Yeah, no, like. no, she became principal. Okay, so she's a principal. Oh, okay. but I don't know if she's still a principal. I know Kirsten just became a doctor. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. She went to Brown University. That's awesome. So we started getting closer around wrestling. Um, me, you, and Danny. Right. Like you talking about when we were in high school? Like 15. That's, I mean, because we were, our parents were driving us around and we were doing all that younger. But once we could start driving and we were doing wrestling and in the sports, and then partying at your place, Danny's place, my place. <laughs> yeah, those were. But well, see, that was more towards like our junior and our senior year. That's when we became the top dogs of school. Yeah. Everybody looked it up. Everybody looked up to us. So, yeah, we had those because Danny's was obviously a spot to go to. My house was obviously a spot to go to. Um, I do only think we only had like maybe one or two at yours. Um, but I do know anything that was at Danny's in, in uh, my house, you were always like second commander. <laughs> you, know, you were always making the, the vice, MySpace post. Was always the vice president. Yeah, he always took the initiative for the uh, social life recruiting to, to expand in our market. You gotta um, get it out there. I had these hot we, pieces we, of asses <laughs> that I needed to flaunt. We, I mean, not include myself, and I just needed to get it done. And, and you did. And we did. We we had a lot of good times. A lot of people came over and, you know, exchanged genuine conversation with meaningful people that we loved. That we yeah. loved. Still do. I mean, of course, a lot of them nowadays, which that's what makes our relationship so special. And that's why we call each other our red light, green light brothers. You know, there is no other red light, green light brother. I don't have other one. Except for my brother, but you know, that's, I mean, fam, that's family. Right. That's but as blood. far as like outside of family, you're the only one that goes back to the furthest. So Hell that's yeah. why we call each other red light, green light bros. Red light. Ah! <laughs> anyway, that's just a little thing that's in between him and I, you know. It's just so what do you like to do? jokes. What do I like to do? Um, let's see. I guess the number one thing that I like to do obviously is my career because that's the set foundation. It's not that, obvious. Well, no, it's, it's not obvious, but to me it's obvious um, because I've taken it personal. Mm -hmm. um, it is my career. I'm no longer working as an employee. I'm now in my career. Um, and my career has taken, me, has taken off and it's been able to provide me with you know, accommodations that I need and has been able to provide for my family. Um, but as far as my work, you know, as just as much as I'm committed to my work, I'm also committed to things that I like doing as far as outside of work, which is bodybuilding, um, playing sports. Um, I love to, uh, 
go out by myself and just mingle with people. Um, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's going to watch a sports game on Saturday or Thursday or, you know, whether it's a client that I'm cleaning their homes. I just love being around people. Um, but I would say my favorite thing to do, obviously, outside of work, because right now my primary is towards my work, because obviously I'm building a, a location, um, would be definitely working out. Um, working out is something that I see myself taking to the next level. Um, I've made that commitment. Um, it's going to take a long time. I know what it takes to do it. So right now it's just more of work. And then my hobby is working out until I can maybe one day become my sole income. Of course, that's the goal, right? We all have goals. Mm -hmm. Shoot for the star. If you miss, heck, at least I know number one of them. You grab it and you're going on your way back down. <laughs> there we go. So, so professional bodybuilder. Yep. Um, definitely doing all the strides to get there. Here's a question that I get from people a lot. As your best friend is... Does Lane take steroids? You got So did you consistently take steroids? I have never taken a steroid before. I've okay. always followed the rules of all the bodybuilders that are based off foods. Once you can find your macros, and macros are your fats, your carbs, and your proteins. Once you can find out what your body understands and digests and passes through your system, you can really base your workout around it and then it's just more of food. So that phrase, of course, me being as a child from I'd say 19 up to 25, when people would tell me, you are what you eat. 95% of what, how you look is what you eat. Me, it passed through one ear and went out the other. I was a young buck, wanted to lift heavy and get big as heck. I thought that was the way to do it. what you used to eat. But now being you know? older, I've ch completely changed. Obviously now I count macros. So I actually got a weight scale I count my egg whites, I count my grams. Like it's a little, I've taken it to the next level of seriousness. And there's a lot of people that they look at when they want to eat, they don't have enough time to measure their foods. But if you can measure your foods and plan it throughout your day, plus your workouts, you're gonna get 10 times more of the response that you're trying to work towards based off whether if it's losing, you know, just fat or if it's building muscle or if it's just getting in shape, or if it's just being able to get off the cows and just run a little bit. It doesn't matter what you want to do. It really based off what you eat. And obviously we know that plant-based foods are better than animal foods, obviously, because it's not the animals that we eat. Yes, I'm saying obviously. You're right. You're right. Um, so back to the plant-based, back to the meat. You haven't been on a plant-based diet. I've never long. been on one. Never been on one. Or ever. Never been on one. But you believe it. And I never will be on one. But I will add it into my workout. I will, I, I do believe in enough of it being healthy that I do need to lean a little bit more towards it, obviously, because if you're eating a bag of M&Ms or if you're eating an apple, it's obvious. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's obvious because you can look this up. It's three times the, obvious. The nutrition for a banana is 27 carbs. The nutrition for a bag of M&Ms is 38 carbs. Your body only understands one, banana or M&Ms. Bananas, your body, understands. your body does not understand M&Ms. So what does it do? It stores it as fat. So if you're noticing stuff that's around your stomach or on your hips, it's because you're eating foods that's processed from the body that it does not understand. So that's just a side note. Let's, uh, it's not facts, not obvious. That's just my own opinion. Let's my own get opinion. on to who is your biggest mentor? and how have they helped give you guidance throughout your life and how have you applied it? I would say my dad. I mean, I know everybody says a family member, obviously. But my dad, to me, has been a huge part of my life. Um, I think he's gone to no longer being just a father figure to me. He's more of an advisor, um, a best friend, um, of course a father, he's always be the father, but to me, he's, he's more than a father to me. It's, it's kind of weird, so it's, it's a weird feeling. Um, and I've, it's been the past three years that I've been able to develop this with him. Um, and my mom is a little bit jealous of it, of course, but 
my dad ultimately would be my my hero, my go-to. Anytime I needed to talk to somebody, I'd call him. Um, and he's got that FaceTime. He, he's got the FaceTime, and he's he's so thankful for that. And he's so thankful that I showed him that <laughs> because he's always calling me, and I'm always calling him. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. How funny was that? We had a six-way, seven-way conversation last night. Myself, Lane, and John, his buddy up here in Louisville, along with That's Mrs. Jan, point. Mr. Vance, my mom, and John's mom. <laughs> so we all decided to FaceTime our moms. All the kids FaceTime their parents. And just gave them some love. Yeah, you got to. We were able to put the video cameras all all together, center, so kind of in a circle, so all the moms all can the moms see each can other see with each other. us. Yep. And uh, I think they got a real, a real special kick out of it. I think it was. Special. You know, and to think about it, I think that was your idea to do that too. Well, you were already on the phone with your mom. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, and on Facetime, and so I decided to Facetime my mom, and. I asked John to take a picture of us FaceTiming our moms, and he, after that, got his mom, and it just naturally, organically happened that way. So I know this is your podcast, David. I've got one question for you. Ask me away, Brett. <laughs> Brett. Um, and of course, there's probably a billion questions that I could ask you. Um, but if you could give me one answer of why I am special to you, what would that answer be? Why are you and I still friends at 30 years old? And we've known each other since elementary school. And of course that was what, four years old? So we're looking at a 26 year old relationship. You know, that's, that's crazy for someone who's 30 and 31 year old can say they have. Because I don't know anybody else that goes that far with our relationship to you. So you and I are really the only ones in that young boat, man. It's like eighty percent of our lives. Why are we? Why, 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 are, why are we still friends to this day? I think we've answered that question pretty thoroughly throughout our love and conversation in the first half of this podcast. Absolutely. And to piggyback on it, it's trust. It's because we've respect. gone we've gone through our trials and tribulations. It's rapport. Yeah. Well, you and I haven't really. We we fight, but it's it's real quick. It has to do with like we fight family. like we our fight family. not kind of well, no. Well, we well, usually well, just well, get well. in verbal conversation and confrontations immediately, yeah. and we just duke it out and say our piece, our harshness, and then, and, and then it's it, and, and then it's it. just done. And then if we need to comfort each other a little bit after to okay. be like, all okay. right, I didn't mean to hurt you with saying this or that. I can remember a few arguments like that throughout our maybe drinking times and and whatnot, but that's really about it. We haven't had really, we haven't had any fuck shit in our relationship. It's been pretty tried and true. And, you know, the trust is definitely, it's never been a time I have not been able to reach you on phone or text or social. And, uh, well, so that's what I you think. had a girlfriend named Peyton for a little while. So that's what I think it is, is that we always have one of those relationships that where no matter what, you and I could go, because we've done it before, two or three years, we've never heard from each other. But it was like, when I texted you, you pick right back up from the last time we spoke. And then we could go for a week or two of talking, and then boom, another year go by. And I say anything then you and I could pick right back up. Whether like our parents brought each other back together or something that you weren't in my parents, I ran in your parents. Because I might go see your parents and not be seeing you for a year. You are the friend that where it was like, you've always been a friend. Even when you weren't a friend. Even when you weren't there during my down moments or even when you weren't there during my up moments. Because obviously you've had up moments and down moments without me and so have I. Um, but we've always had one of those connections to where when one of us sends each other a text message, we pick up from the last damn time that we talked, you know, because obviously we've had those separations, you know, specifically 
with a pin. You'll you'll be my best man, bro. For sure. <laughs> I'll uh and I know probably I'll get married I know. for another ten or twenty years. Seven, wait, wait, years. Wait, wait, wait. We're not gonna be married. seventy or eighty before, before I get bro, married. Look, bro. We are bucket list kicking for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I can have multiple marriages. No. Hey, mm. High five. Crazy <laughs> <Wait, he's laughs> yes. Anyway. I don't know. I kind of believe in polyamory. I'll just put that out there. Yeah. I've been listening to Aubrey Marcus and Whitney Love a lot lately, and they believe in polyamory. It's, uh, I don't know. I can see my, myself having multiple lovers. And there's nothing wrong with that, man, because that's the first thing to something is seeing it. You got to see it to believe it. I mean, that's what you want. I don't necessarily need one woman. I can openly entertain more than that hey i've done it in the past sometimes openly sometimes not so much do it to you man yeah. <laughs> some of the some of us men are one men women and some of our multiple women you know and some of us don't like women at all which all Very of them are equal at the same it's the oh. same person True. but so let's talk about your little brother. What about my little my little brother? Who's a few inches taller than me. <laughs> Several inches taller than me. We don't need to talk about him too long now. I know, he'd love that. He would. So I whooped his ass. <laughs> he was about One time. five or six. <laughs> no, he might have been like seven or eight. You think he was about eight. His and I was, was about, a little boy. I was about eleven. That's the last time I ever both chased his ass. <laughs> that was about it. It was the first and the last. And that, was, that was about it, right there. He he bucked up on me, but um, no, we we never. Really, no, I guess Chase and I butted heads a lot more often than you and I. Chase and I have butted heads. We're 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 similar in a lot of ways. You and I are too. Well, see, that's the thing, though. Like you and Chase do not have the relationship that we have. Mm -mm. Chase is one of those guys that you are friends with him because of me. Same way with like your family. My family is friends with you because you're friends with me, your family. You and I have a special relationship. I agree, but it's I also the, disagree. The, the, the main, it's not just because of you. You've been out of the picture and I've been friends with Chase. You're right, you're right. But I will say because of you and I is the reason why your mom and my mom are friends and why your dad and my dad are friends is because of you and I. You and I have always kept connection. And say, yeah, we, say we definitely started, started like, for sure. For sure. You know, you and Chase. I was chasing Caleb. You and our Chase friends. are best friends like you and I are, but Chase will always have your back. If something were to happen devastatingly or if it was a, like you're in trouble, you know Chase would be there. Obviously, I would be there. I would be there. You know, I would. Chase, you have that relationship, but the, as far as friends, you know what I mean? Like we've had our, I think majority of our fights that you and I have had is because of him, because this, Chase is just one of those yeah. One of those guys. At least he's a tough guy. At least recently. He's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. But, you know, he's he's grown as an adult. My brother has grown up. I mean, he's 28 years old now. It's crazy to think I got a... My younger brother's 28, you know. I mean, he knows what he wants. I mean, he's, grown, he's a grown man now. Just like I am. You know, and as far as me seeing stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, because there's friends that he's best friends with that I get along with, but... Those friends, I'm not best friends with his friends, you know, but they respect me because I'm his brother and I respect them because they're friends with my brother, you know, kind of thing like that. So you're in with the family. Like Chase has got your back if, you know, with you being down in Georgia, of course, me being up here in Kentucky, if anything were to go down, obviously, you know, I got our back because I've got your back before. Anything you ask me for, I got you. So you already know that. But as far as like, venturing out from me in our relationship. Mom, Dad, Chase, we got you. Hell yeah. So That's you don't fine. have to worry about that. So what do you want to be when you grow up? What do I want to be when I grow up? So if you'd have asked me that 15 years ago, I would have said Superman. Why? Now that you're asking me that 15 years Why do you want to be now, Superman? I still, it's the same answer, it's Superman. Um, obviously, because I just, personally, Superman figure to me is more of 
um, an inspiration, obviously because it's the man of steel. I don't know why I like that word, but I like that word um, because I haven't proven anything on that word. <laughs> there we go. Well, I, don't know. I don't know why I keep saying it, but I do. Um, to you folks, it's not, but to me, it is. It's more of a motivation. So Superman to me is a motivation. There's times where we all get down and sometimes I have to just kind of look at that figure and put myself in that figure. And that's kind of what excelled me through my career. Um, you also very much look like Clark Kent. Um, I, I actually went towards that. I changed and it's something that I believed in heavily. Um, because I knew Superman inspired me. So I was like, well, why not try to look like him? Mm -hmm. So uh, I cut my hair. It was long, made it obviously what it is now. That's obvious is that I cut my hair, comb my hair, just like Superman. People call me Superman and it lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. But to me, Superman is an inspiration because of my career because it's made my career, it's made me good at what I do for my career because I look towards that inspiration of Superman. Absolutely. Um, so that's where the Superman kind of falls as far as an inspiration thing, but I never really grew up as a Superman person. I was more Hulk. I always liked Hulk. I was a bodybuilder, blah, 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 wrestling, big guy, I love Hulk. But as I became a man um, and the career that I landed in now, Leading, it, leading to where it led me now, people call me Superman. And I really just kind of took that in. So that's kind of where the whole Superman that was yours. falls in. Oof. And <laughs> that's some good stuff right there. <laughs> but Superman is, is something that will, that I have in the past two years just wrapped around. And I believe it's a huge part of my success, and it will always be a part of my life. I like that. It's everywhere. Green it's everywhere in my heart. It's everywhere in my house. I'm a huge believer in surrounding yourself with something. You'll become that something. Hell yeah. And you said as far as the Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> that was always my. I've heart. seen the movie. <laughs> How about The Flash? The Flash, um, I, when I was, excuse me, when I was a little kid in my sports days, I was really fast. My mom and dad loved calling me Lightning, so I liked Flash then, but it's- You cool look like him a little bit too, yeah. Flash, I just, sweet, you can run fast. So, it's been a while since I've been on camera, but I do remember how to, and- You're right, you're I'm totally right. When you're saying it, I, I, I know it, I'm like, it's it's retake, retakes, and retakes. I know how exactly. So, and that's where I'm at. Like I said, it, it, it's, I used to do reps. I used to stand here, right here, shoot a promo. Three, two, one. John Cena. <laughs> Son of a bitch. They gave me a chance. I'm going to see you January the 1st. You have what I want, and I'm going to take it. You. And you, nobody's gonna stop me. Then it's promos that I'm good at. So I know that, so when you say obvious and you wanna slap me and stuff like that, I got it, bro. Yeah, because- But I know you, you can edit the stuff. Over, over yeah, time, I've gotten comfortable with punching you and Chase because y'all are such large humans. And- um, Well, there's some people who just can't do. And I, I guess I hit too hard sometimes and it's just been a, per, a protuberant of you and Chase both to be like, David, I'm gonna punch you back. And then I got punched back a few times. Agree or disagree? Do you know why we get to that point? Cause I shouldn't be hitting y'all. No, it's because of something that you're doing that leads you to hitting. And what is that? I don't know, talking shit? No, getting too drunk <laughs> and getting too hyped up. Every time you get too hyped up, it's and usually hype. Hyped up, you get excited and you want to grab people and you want to pull people and you want to punch people. And that's where we were like, 
draw the line. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so? Yeah. As long as you can edit this, we'll be at now. We're good. We're good now? High five! Good exercise. <laughs> So is it good or no good? No, I'm, I'm gonna cut some of that. But yeah, sure. obviously, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got good stuff that we can add in here. <laughs> I just like my like into the role. I like that. Well, they tell you they they tell you to pick three things: John Cena, championship belt on January the first. Three things. You got one. Who, what, and where? One minute. Go. Where? That's why I was like, John Cena. I got that. <laughs> they gave me a chance, motherfucker. So where are we going tonight? Um, I have my phone right here, and where, ever you would like. The Highlands. The Highlands. And, and we're, Wolver- going, we're going to O'Shea is what we're going to do. There's a district of bars up here in Louisville. We'll go to O'Shea. You can't say Louisville. That's wrong. You can, but somebody it's might It's Louisville. Me. It's like one and a half syllables. <laughs> it's not, it's not three. It's not really even two. It's about one and a half. Lol. So how do you think we do with our podcast? Is it- I think it's still going great. <laughs> I was just checking my phone. We are being responsible tonight. Both of us and are getting, getting in a lift. We're getting a lift. Truly. Taking a lift. Hey, so when do we get to do a vulgar podcast? Next time. My friend. Next time. Stay tuned. Holy shit. Tiempo. All right. Cool. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Where can everybody find you online, man? Vascular underscore Vassar. That is my Instagram name. On Facebook, Vance Vassar. There we go. There we go. Thank you all for tuning in. Love. Until next time. See you later. Hasta luego. Bye-bye.